Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to episode 48 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. Ooh, I've got lava sitting up there, that's right. Uh, last episode, I discovered something very interesting. I had nowhere near the capacity for the amount of income I was getting with uh, all the dirt and cobblestone and all that good junk that was coming from my sorting system here. So I decided just to toss it into lava. So a quick solution here uh, that I came up with uh, pretty much between the last episode and this one uh, was to set up this nifty little uh, lava pit right here. So it's just a transposer set up to uh, spit out any items that go into it straight up into the lava. Now, of course, the only items that can go through here are orange colored items. And it's the uh, restriction tube, which is good. And of course, orange colored items are set up like so. Uh, it's only the, the basalt and the sand, gravel, dirt, and cracked sand and cobble. So pretty much all the stuff we're going to find on the ground that we're not really that interested in. Uh, otherwise, our uh, mining machine is doing pretty well. Uh, Mugs was definitely cool, helping help, help out, hung out, had a good time. But now we've got to go back to the single player stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed having Mugs by. He was totally cool and helped out a bunch. But now I want to start working on this uh, little nifty gadget that I set up here. So let's head over to that age, run outside, pass some skeletons and some bad guys, and head over to the mining age. What do we got to do? Well, here we are. Uh, first off, uh, this thing is already mobile, and by mobile, I mean it's all over the place already. Let's see. I don't even know where it is. I have to go find it. Uh, I have not been running it. Not, oh, there it is. So, yeah, not too far. But you can see here, like, it's, it's doing its thing, right? Like, I've tested it a few times just to make sure that things were behaving a bit. I uh, got this jetpack on, which is helping out. All I got to do is run the cycle command, and boom. It's going to run and do its thing. These guys are going to plop down their uh, little gadgets and down it goes straight into the earth, clearing out tons of terrain. And usually in about five to ten seconds, we've hit bedrock. <laughs> nice. <laughs> How cool is that? Uh, all the items, of course, are going in there. And then, uh, you know, a few seconds later, all the turtles will uh, dig up their, their mining wells and uh, we're ready for the next cycle to run. And, of course, this guy is ready to go. Also made a few changes to the code kind of forget if I showed you guys this or not, but I made it so that it accepts arguments. Uh, you can tell it how many times to run. And uh, it basically says if it doesn't get an argument, then only run once. And then uh, it'll run that uh, frame move and dig uh, iteration, you know, once every so often. And I have it sleeping about 22 seconds in between each cycle. So that's not too bad. I could probably shorten that up a little bit. Uh, also set it up with a uh, second uh, energy tesseract here. So we've got our energy tesseracts with main power. Uh, by having two of these guys, it basically allows me to run twice as fast which is definitely noticeable like I noticed a huge in increase in speed I think I had it to about 30 some seconds last time uh, bef before I had to cut down now it really does hit bedrock within about 15 seconds and I think our hold up right now is the ender chest sorting system not everything makes it down into that uh, system there so it does run within about 20 yeah, 15 to 20 seconds, let's say, to hit bedrock. So we're doing pretty good. Uh, I do want to do more. Uh, I want to do lots more, actually. So let's put, uh, put away some of this stuff that I've got in my inventory here. I think Mugs left most of his stuff behind. Uh, I've got a wireless receiver. Good. Uh, I've got some frame motors. Probably don't need them. But there's a few things I'm definitely going to want. Uh, first off, I want an easy way to reach this thing. Uh, right now, of course, it's set up that I need to come running over here and put on my jetpack and I have to fly over. So I need a nice and easy way to get to this uh, little guy. And uh, after I let him run for a while, well... <laughs> Yeah, just imagine that I have to run for quite a while to catch up with them. So we're definitely going to way uh, to do that. We're also going to want a chunk loader. I'm thinking just a standard chunk loader to load, you know, maybe three by three chunks or something like that. I could just load the one chunk that we're in, but that's really not going to work too well, uh, especially once like part of this machine crosses a chunk boundary. So I think just to be safe, we should load three by three. That would probably be a good idea. And then uh, beyond that, we want to, you know, fancy it up a little bit, make it look cool, and also make it so that it's like, you know, uh, a turn on and offable. Like, I want to be able to just flip a lever and have this thing start running. I don't know if I want it to, uh, you know, remotely uh, activate from the entry point to the age over there. That might be possible. I don't know. Maybe even I'll put a book on this thing just so I can travel back to my main base when I'm at the actual quarry. So lots to do on this thing. I want to get started getting this stuff all put together today. So I'll be back in just a few minutes once I've collected a few items to help me travel around and do what I want to do. All right, we'll be back soon. Just want to note for you that as soon as I came back to my base, I saw a creeper, I killed him, and my sword was destroyed. Oh well. Let's go enchant this guy. I do have 30-some levels of experience on me, so I can go do the enchant thing. And uh, I want to see if I can get any kind of good stuff. Uh, I did never set up my enchanting table, did I? 
Yeah, I should probably do that. Do with all those bookshelves and stuff. I think I just broke it all down. Well, that's okay. I think what I might wind up doing is going to figure out what all the enchanted books I have in here are for. Uh, I think I should also turn on my blaze farm, just so I can start getting more experience and more enchanted books. That'll be good. Even though my, uh, yeah, that's why I turned off the blaze farm. My blaze rods are full. So let's see what kind of books I got in here. Uh, I do not think it'll be easy for me to determine what they are without picking them up. So uh, I'm gonna kind of go through here a little bit and see what I've got. So first off, I've got efficiency four, that kind of thing. I'll be back in a few minutes once I figure this out. All right, guys, I did a little bit of work labeling all the enchants I've got. Some pretty nice ones, not gonna lie. There's some good stuff showing up here already. Um, but did discover I can't place two signs next to each other on this corner here, so I wound up throwing cobblestone in each of the corners. Oh well, no big deal. Uh, not a big deal at all, really. Uh, plenty of cool stuff that I got, and I came up with what I think is going to be a pretty nice set of enchants, a fire aspect, an unbreaking three, and a sharpness four. I think that'll be nice on this uh, diamond sword that I've got. So I'm going to run over to my anvil and apply it. Oh look, I got a chicken egg. Oh, no chicken in it. So, Anvil, what do we got here? Uh, I'm going to place this in here, and I'm going to enchant him with Sharpness 4. Cool. Unbreaking 3. And Fire Aspect. Oh, I destroyed the Anvil. <laughs> nice. That's cool. But hey, I got all my enchants on it. Alright, cool. Make another one while I'm at it real quick, and then I'm going to get to work on making this cool stuff. And of course, if I want to travel from one spot to another, a good way to do that is with a portal frame. So I'm going to get one of those uh, little portal frame things that you can just place on the wall. I'm going to go ahead and get a wither and take him down just to make this uh, nice and easy. So, what's up, buddy? Got to test out my new sword, too, while I'm at it. Waha. Nice. Take him down. Oh yeah. I feel like I made a good choice on my enchantments right there. And with that, we've got a miniature black hole, two portal spawners, ready to head over there. Now remember, uh, if you want to attach things like uh, like a portal spawner or like red alloy wiring, for example, you're going to need uh, some of those uh, covers and panels and stuff like that. In this case, we're going to need panels. Uh, now one other thing I'm going to need is probably uh, some wireless transmitters. So let's get at least one or two of those. For that, I'm going to need uh, one of those ender pearl thingies, so I'll be back in a sec. Ta-da! Wireless transmitter. And I've got the wireless receiver here ready to go with it. So let's head over and make it real easy for me to transport over to that frame machine that we made last episode. So right here-ish, somewhere around here, I'm going to want like a nice little pathway that will lead over to what's going to be the frame entrance. So let's put it just like right here. That looks like a nice spot. Now uh, what I'm going to do here is just set it up and I'm going to place the portal spawner in here and I'm going to make it the, uh, I'm going to go with the yellow and red color. Why not? We'll make this guy yellow and we're going to set it when portals close when red power is cut. Yes. Okay. Good. Uh, to this we're going to attach right down here. Uh, the wireless transmitter, and we're going to set this guy's frequency to, uh, yeah, let's see, I'm already using two, is that what I'm using, uh, I'm going to use it up to three, all right, so we, may, we better make this guy four, okay, and we'll, uh, we'll call this, uh, minor portal, sure, why not, frequency four, and we should be good to go with that, and that is going to be activated, of course, by a pressure plate, but I don't think I wanted it there, did I? I probably want it here. Yeah. So we'll make this guy four right here. Minor portal. Didn't mean to hit remove on that. All right. So that's cool. See how that works? Nice. Fancy, right? Love it. Off in this direction we run. And run and run and run. And I'm going to need electric jetpack. Man, I've already got three sets of chess pieces. What am I going to do? Probably going to have to make more. And up here, where do we want to get shot out of when I uh, activate this thing? I think I'm like right on the back here, maybe in a corner somewhere, I don't know. Let's open up this thing. Uh, we're going to need some panels for sure. Pretty sure that's what I need. If I'm wrong, oh well, I'll get yelled at. And we're going to want frames. Let's just put it 
I'm thinking right here is like a perfect spot. Right? That should be good. So panel, panel, when you want to place a portal spawner. And we're going to make this guy redstone powers cut, yes, and red. And then, of course, we want a panel to put our receiver on. Okay? And this guy can be frequency 4. And that should be all we need to do, I think. Maybe I don't want him there. Hmm. I don't think that's actually going to work. Let's see. Do I have my little remote? I think he needs to be in front, so I might have to move that. We'll see. Frequency 4 and... Yeah, I didn't think so. See, that actually has to face the portal, not the frames, because the frames won't send the uh, redstone signal through. So we're going to actually put him right here. And we'll want the, this guy. Frequency 4. And activate. Nice. So that when I'm back in this direction... Now this, of course, is a one-way portal because I don't have a, uh, another transmitter receiver set up for this side of the, of the house. So basically this is a one-way uh, transmitter. I've not decided yet if I want a second directional going. But basically when I come into this age, I should be able to go poof straight through onto my frame machine. Wherever it is, it can go, I can go anywhere. And I should be able to teleport right over. So that is awesome. Uh, we're also probably, I, I don't like having too many frames on here. Like I don't like not having walls, but basically the more frames you put on here, the more work it's gonna take to move it, right? So we wanna be a little careful with regards to that. Let's make sure everybody's happy with their position and nobody's gonna complain about the way they're set up. I'm going to run the cycle command and that should show me that everything runs. Nice. And down go the mining wells. Chewing straight through the earth. How cool is that to watch? <laughs> nice. All right, back to building. Uh, what else did I want to put on this thing? Probably a book back to the overworld so that I don't have to run back to the overworld location. Uh, I might want like some kind of way to get back in here at some point. Yeah, we'll see. I'm all right with the way things are for now. All right, so let's test this out, right? We travel to mining age four. We decide we want to go visit the mining thing. So we just step right through the portal. Awesome. When we're ready to go back, I'm thinking what I might want. Not sure if I need one of these panels here or not. So let me just see. I'm thinking if I put it, where do I want to put this thing? Hmm. All right, guys, I think I'm going to place this guy right here. Now, I'm not sure if this overworld linking book needs a, a little panel under it or not. So we're going to go ahead and run the cycle command again and see what happens. Oh, I guess it moved happily. Cool. All right, so things are working. I like it. So uh, we've got our book here that leads back to the overworld. We've got our portal that leads onto this platform from the entrance to this world. And we've got a computer that runs the cycle command, and it will go ahead and do what we want it to do. I really am pretty happy with this. I mean, this works for me pretty well. Um, not sure what else I could really want out of this machine, except an easy way to turn it on and off whenever I want. Now, unfortunately, I don't think, I can't think of any good way to do this, but I really, well, maybe I can think of a way to do this, kind of. I, I do kind of have a way to do this. Basically, I can't think of a good way to, I don't think RedNet works across dimensions, so there's no way I can say, like, have a computer in my main base and send the command from the computer to get this guy to start running. That definitely won't work. But uh, what does work across dimensions is wireless redstone. So I could have, like, a wireless redstone receiver set up on top of this computer right here that basically says, like, hey, whenever the computer receives a wireless redstone signal, go ahead and uh, just keep running the cycle command until the signal turns off. That's one way we could set this up to work cross-dimensionally. So what we could do is, uh, you know, pretty much manage it that way. I'm thinking that's probably what I'm going to have to wind up doing. I can't think of any other good way to set this up. So let's see if I want to run this again. Now a good way to run this is just right here. Cycle. Boom. And it goes. And that'll go. And everybody's happy. Yeah. Working well. So I do want to head back to the overworld and see what I can make. I'm probably going to need another transmitter. And I'm thinking I'm going to want to probably have it in my base. So let's change up this program just a little bit. Okay, We're, we've got Cycle going here. Um, you know, we'll let that run for a minute and we'll wait. Okay. I'm going to edit the auto cycle. That sounds like a good name for a program. And what we're going to do is the following. 
All right, so here's what I could up with. Uh, remember I told you you need the panels for whenever you have uh, red alloy wiring or anything like that and levers on your frames. So I've got a real simple program set up called AutoCycle, okay? Let's check it out, AutoCycle. What it's gonna do is while true, so it's constantly gonna keep running the following set of code. It's gonna check if the input of redstone signal on the top of the computer is true. If it is, then it's gonna run the cycle program. It's gonna wait two seconds. Whether or not it's true, it doesn't care. It's just gonna say, hey, uh, I'm waiting two seconds. So so if it's not true, it's just going to wait two seconds and check again. So, you know, pretty simple. Uh, and then one more thing I think I should do. Edit, startup. And we're going to shell.run autocycle. This way, the autocycle program is always running on this computer. So right now, it's running. It's doing its thing. Nothing's happening because there's no redstone signal. It's going to wait until it gets a redstone signal. And as soon as it does get a redstone signal, we should, within two seconds, automatically move. And then uh, we'll do our cycle program. And you can see it just ran the cycle program because it says iteration one right here. Because, you know, there's only one iteration of the cycle program. Makes sense, right? Uh, so now we've got these guys running. And what should happen is, as soon as this thing uh, picks up the uh, mining wells, so we'll wait for them to happen. This thing has about a 22 second delay, and then it has a two second delay after that, so then we should move right afterwards. And that was pretty much perfect. I don't think I could have asked for better timing than what I just got there. Uh, you know, like I said, if I put more tesseracts, or even better, if I were to put a redstone energy cell up here, or a couple redstone energy cells for that matter, I could probably shorten this time even more. Um, but for now, I think it's a pretty stable machine. So basically, we just need to constantly supply a redstone signal here, and our program will run. So you can see here, everything's good, and within a few seconds, it'll run again. Now, turning off the redstone signal really doesn't change anything. It's in the middle of the cycle program so it's still right now waiting for this whole thing to run it's going to go ahead and let these guys finish their mining well operation and then it's going to uh you know collect all the mining wells and then it's going to check again for a redstone signal it won't find one so it won't run anymore makes sense i hope so so we're not going to use a lever here of course goodbye lever Hello, wireless receiver. We're going to set this guy to frequency 10. That just sounds like a nice round number. Cool. And we're going to name it um, Mining Machine. Set name. Cool. So whenever we activate frequency 10 on the wireless frequency system, right? So here we go. Frequency 10, activate. Within two seconds, we should get our movement and quarrying. Oh, that's cool. I am really enjoying that. And then I just can't get enough of watching this thing dig down. It's hilarious to me. <laughs> How cool is that? Oh, I love it. All right. So now we can go back to our main base and our main house and get this thing all squared away. So let's travel back using the new book that we just placed down on top of our mining machine. Now, of course, the redstone signal is now off, so it's not going to run again. No big deal. Okay. Link book to the overworld. Heading back. What is it, daytime or nighttime out here? Ah, it's day, we're good. Getting to be night-ish. Or morning, I don't know, it's something. All right, so where do we want to put this uh, lever here? Well, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm thinking, though, like, you know, we could actually place it wherever. We could have it in a couple different spots. Um, but oh, I'm not going to worry too much about it. Let's get a transmitter. We're going to need another one of those, so we're going to need another... One of these guys. Let's just do this. You here. You two, please. Thank you. I thought I made a plan for these, but I guess I didn't. Oh, well, no biggie. Just one. Thank you. So what I should be able to do now is just come over here. I'm pretty sure these work across dimensions. We're going to find out. Um, don't want to fall on the floor. That's not the place I want to be. Let's put this down. Just start, you know, cleaning things up a little bit. Oh, yeah. You know what I need is a chunk loader. I just saw this chunk loader in the wall, and I'm like, wait a second. I'm forgetting something really important. If I don't have a chunk loader over there, this isn't going to work at all, is it? Nope. Oh, well, we'll set it up to frequency 10, but we're not going to test it just yet. We'll just have the lever here. All right, we're ready to go. Now I need a chunk loader. Uh, trying to remember how to make a chunk loader. Pretty sure I need an enchanting table and some gold and a obsidian, maybe. Sure, why not? There we go, chunk loader. Gold, enchantment table, ender pearl, four obsidian, two diamonds, and a book. 
I should be able to manage most of that. Got plenty of books. How am I for diamonds? Uh, I could use more, but that's okay. Uh, where is my obsidian? Probably don't have any. I know it doesn't get sorted. Hey, you guys want to see a neat trick while I'm here? Crescent hammer. Check this out. Yoink. No. Alright, I lied. It works on vanilla chests. It'll rotate them. Maybe the uh, Omni Wrench will rotate the, uh, these chests. We'll see. Alright, I need some wood. Don't need quite this much obsidian, but it never hurts to have a little extra. So I'm always hurting for it for some reason. Then golden and pearl. And chunk loader. Nice. I'll throw you in here. Why not? Back to the mining age we go. Remember, we need to chunk loader there to keep everything running when I'm not in the age. So right now, if we checked our TPS command, uh, okay, maybe not. I forgot. I just updated the pack to 520, by the way, and uh, the TPS command is not built in. I have to add that. So didn't want to go back to the overworld. I want to go to mining age 4 and right through here. Ta-da! Chunk loader time. Uh, very important to have a chunk loader. Number one, um, once this thing moves a little bit further, I suspect, it'll be outside the loaded boundary of the player. So basically the player loads a bunch of chunks around it. Pretty soon, this thing's going to be too far away for that to happen. So let's also see if this works. Hey, it does. Nice. We got the new version of NEI, which means you can hit F9 to see uh, the current chunk boundaries. So did I put this guy within the chunk boundary? Of course I didn't. I'm off by one. Well, no, I wasn't off by one, was I? Yeah, I think I was. Yeah, I was off by one. Well, I was trying, but I missed it. I didn't have the F9 functionality. Oh, well. If I really, really wanted to, I could probably move this whole thing over one. But I'm not going to worry about that right now. Um, you know, since it is a giant frame machine, I should be able to move it over one. But we've got these extra things um, off to the side anyway, so might as well leave it as is. So right here is probably where I'm going to want to place my chunk loader. Cool. Uh, we're going to keep the radius at 2, and we're going to tell it to show lasers so we can see um, all the boundaries here. So F9 again to clear those uh, chunk lasers, and we should see that it's doing a nice job of keeping all the chunks in front of and behind the machine loaded, as well as on either side. Nice job, chunk loading lasers. You're doing good. All right, so uh, we're going to hide the lasers again, and everybody's cool. So back to the overworld, now to test for real if this thing works. You ready? So, it should be chunk loaded, it should be ready to receive a redstone signal, it should be able to move on its own without me there, everything should work, here goes nothing. Boom. Within a few seconds we should start seeing items showing up right in here. Cross your fingers. Hooray! There's stuff! I was about to say, where is everything? But there, it started showing up. So, like I told you guys, uh, the items like, uh, you know, gravel and cobble and junk that we don't need are going to go off to the right side there and get painted orange, and that's just fine. And they're probably going to wind up getting destroyed in that lava. Not a big deal. Uh, we probably will create, like I did on my multiplayer series, um, another way of producing UU Matter. So the recyclers that I had here were a great way to get started with UU Matter, but if we really want to create like a good amount, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be able to keep up with this mining machine. Just won't happen. No way. So we're going to have to do something a little different. So everything's running smoothly here? Look at this, man. I'm excited. Nice. We're getting some copper. We're getting some other stuff. Ooh, lead. Nice. All right. Good deal, man. So now we have a lever. We hit the lever, we get stuff. I personally like that. I think that's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Flip lever, get items. That's kind of the best mining machine you could ask for. And of course, turn lever off, stop getting items. Now it won't instantly stop, of course, that's to finish its current cycle. But you can see, like I said, the ender chest was getting pretty full pretty quickly. So no big deal. Uh, we will definitely come up with some new gadgets and stuff to manage the amount of items that we're getting at some point. But for now, we're all right. Look at that, man. Everything's flowing everywhere going pretty well. So now the ender chest has stopped filling up because I turned the lever off. So we're no longer getting items. If I want to start getting items again, it's real easy. Flip the lever and we start getting them. So that whole computer controlled thing is really helping us out a lot. It's awesome. 
I like it. It means that pretty much under no circumstances should the, 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 the quarry thing get stuck for any reason, I would think. Um, you know, who knows? I, I mean, we'll figure it out at some point. Now, what will happen is, um, you know, if these things backlog, it's no big deal. The turtles will act as buffers to quarry and, uh, you know, pick it up, but uh, they won't pick up the mining well in front of them until their internal buffers are full. Remember that. That's a key important piece, right? So once their, uh, you know, mining buffers have, uh, you know, emptied out, then they'll be able to pick up their mining well again. So pretty important to note. Cool. We're also getting a bunch of uh, Zycraft stuff. Hey, Shorn, Soren's chest of useless things, huh? Not so useless anymore, honestly, guys. Uh, it's raining out. I hate the rain. Mostly because it causes lots of lag for me a lot. Anyway, uh, Soren's Chest of Useless Things. Not so useless anymore, guys. We got some cool stuff to check out with Zycraft. We're definitely going to be getting into some of the new Zycraft toys that have come out in the latest update uh, pretty soon. Probably in the next couple episodes, I'll start building some Zycraft tanks and some other cool things to mess around with. But for now, I'm just really happy that I have this good amount of income coming in. I mean, this can't be beat right here. Nice. All right, I'll be back in a few. Oh, look at here, guys. We've got a perfect example of a backlog. Something's clogged somewhere. I don't know exactly what, but I'm going to go find out. What is full? So it shouldn't be that orange stuff anywhere. Uh, let's see. You're not full. It's probably my miscellaneous junk chest. I think this one looked... Yeah, he looked like... Oh, I'm getting rocky princesses. Nice. I wanted those. Um, pretty good. Pretty good. So I wanted to see what happens over in the mining age when we have a backlog. Because I was just talking about it, and then within a minute or two it happened. So I'm like, all right, let's demonstrate. It's raining out, which is awesome. So what should happen here is anything that can't put back into the chest below it's going to keep trying to do that remember so these things are full so this guy's sitting here saying like i'm trying to get rid of this cobblestone and it's still here so like you know i gotta get rid of it right now some of these guys did manage to fit their stuff into the chest below so uh they were able to you know quarry and do whatever they needed to do now a few of these guys looks like they're still in cycle mode so let's let's go watch what's happening here um, a few of them are just continuously repeating the uh, placing down of the mining well. They're just mining down and not getting anything. So the ones that did collect, all right, that's not a bad thing, though. Like, that's no big deal. The ones that didn't collect, they're kind of gumming up the work. So the frames aren't moving because of that. So let's head back to the overworld and clear up that um, jam so that we can demonstrate what happens once it is cleared. So off in this direction. And down here we go. And I'm going to collect uh, some of these princesses and drones. And even this valiant, because that's probably a good one to have too. Maybe even a few of these uh, pieces of flint. And I probably want to start voiding flint. So maybe we should start doing that as well. I'm going to put flint in the voiding spot. Where are we at? Flint. Oh look, everything's running again. And we should see that our ender chest will start refilling pretty quickly with stuff. Um, so once the cycle catches up, it'll take about at least a minute. But uh, it should get to a point here where it says, oh, good, I can move again. And, you know, everything will start behaving. So we'll check in this in a sec once I relocate Flint here. Is Flint? Flint's in miscellaneous junk. So let's just put Flint in orange. And then it'll get, you know, taken care of. And hey, look, things are flowing through again. Nice. You know what? I'm going to help it out. I'm just going to give it some Flint. We can watch it get voided. So basically by throwing it into the uh, lava there, it's getting destroyed. Cool, huh? Look at that. Nice. Instantly vaporized. And I just thought that was cool looking. I uh, just used some um, some stone cover strips. Not bad, right? Keeps the lava from flowing out all over the place. Cool. All right. So now I've got some rocky bees, which is actually pretty good because they have a trait that I really kind of want. Um, and I'm going to note that to you guys real quick, and then we got to wrap up the episode. So let's get our... Realizer. So what do Rocky Bees have that's so awesome and that I really want to get and I'm really glad that I did now? Let's check it out. We've got, uh, they have, they are a slow worker and they have really short life. They don't have anything too fancy. They actually fertilize not with flowers, but with rocks. So you need to have cobblestone near them. Uh, they have really low fertility, which means they don't have like more, they only have one offspring, which is kind of not good. Like if you're trying to breed, you want more offspring, so a better chance of a good offspring. But what they do have, which is really awesome, is the second trait here. They have like the best stuff you could ever get. They have a temperature tolerance plus or minus two, and they have humidity tolerance plus or minus two. What this means is in like a normal, normal environment, 
pretty much any bee can be, uh, you know, happy in that environment if they got plus or minus two. The only bees that aren't too happy usually are the, um, the ones that go in the nether, but, you know, that's not so bad. We've also got the uh, nocturnal flyer and cave dwelling traits, which are all super important. Nocturnal means that they can continue working at night, and flyer means that they can continue working during the rain. And then finally, cave dwelling means they don't actually have to see the sky. They can actually live in the cave underground. Um, so, you know, no need for a glass ceiling to see the sky if we don't want. So in this situation, that's not too big of a deal, but, you know, hey, whatever. Uh, let's go to check out our extra bee machine. Remember, we need the isolator here. Just going to go ahead and throw the rocky drone in there and we'll see what happens hopefully hopefully uh we'll be able to get some good stuff now like i said they only have one offspring so there's real no sense in mating them trying to get lots and lots and lots of drones to isolate their genes because like i said you know they don't really have offspring but i did get a valiant drone a princess or something what i get yeah valiant princess those are good i'm gonna hang on to them so we definitely need to get more into the bee stuff so what i get here rock pollination serum yeah it's all right which one was the junky stuff? These were the ones that were nice, right? High fertility, fast productivity. This is the good stuff, right? And over here was just species serums. So uh, I should hold on to a place. You know what? I'll just get rid of this one. I don't care about it. Uh, shorter lifespan. That's actually not terribly bad. I think if I don't have that already, I'll grab it and hold on to it. Did I have shorter lifespan? Probably not. Shorter lifespan. Now this was a cultivated species serum, and this is a cultivated species serum, so I really don't need this guy either. Let's go ahead and burn these up. Rock pollination, I don't care about you. What else did I get? Low fertility. Yeah, that's also not terribly useful. What are you doing? How come there's cultivated drones in there? How did drone... Oh, I see. You were getting analyzed, and then that happened. Okay, I have to do something about that. So you can go right into the gene pool. Got to fix that somehow. We'll get there. Slowest flowering. That does not sound like something I want or care about. So we'll let these guys uh, process, and hopefully, like I said, uh, we should come up with something pretty spiffy. Both humidity tolerances. Nice. That's really good. That means that any bees that need high humidity or something along those lines, like the jungle bees, they usually need like a decent environment, right? Right now, all my bees aren't producing anything because it's not daytime. Well, that kind of stinks. If I got the nocturnal trait, then I could start using that to let them keep producing even when it's nighttime, which would be, hey, there we go. Speaking of, nocturnal serum. Nice. We're definitely going to want to use that coming up very soon. Uh, otherwise, I think we're doing all right. Plenty of redstone energy cell. Um, and we're going to get into some of the other bee machines pretty soon, maybe next episode even, because we want to check into those things. Uh, we also have a lot of other stuff to get to this season. I still, what I got here, rocky species. All right, I'll hang on to that. That's not a big deal. Throw that in the species chest. And, uh, you know, I'm going to hang on to my princesses. The, the drones, uh, they're all right, but the princesses, they're kind of important. So maybe I'll hold on to them in this chest here for now. I really, really need to come up with a better way of hanging on to these things. I mean, I guess I could throw them in this nifty guy, right? The indexer. That works. All right, so like I said, got to wrap up the episode. So really do hope you guys enjoyed checking out episode 48. Um, I am pretty pleased with the way the mining machine is working out. Oh, it's nighttime. Better run for the house. Not that I'm afraid of dying or anything, but, you know, creepers are annoying. All right, so mining machines still running. Still lots of items flowing through here, pulling out of the ender chest, bunch of junk coming through, which is awesome. Uh, we're going to keep an eye on this stuff. And remember, the reason I chose the biomes that I did is so we can start getting those nifty emeralds. So we should start collecting them somewhere. I forget. I think they're going into this chest here. So we've got 15 emeralds already, which is really cool. We're going to be able to buy some really good stuff with that pretty soon. And we've got a lot more things to check out. All right, guys, so hope you enjoyed this episode. Direwolf20 signing off. Take it easy.